My name is John Ferrara. I'm the CEO of Nimble. Nimble is the relationship-focused CRM for Microsoft and Google small business teams. This is the first in a series of podcasts where we're going to explore the power of relationships and their effect on your life's journey. My first guest today is my dear friend, Ramon Ray. Ramon is the unapologetically positive and passionate about making the world a better place. I love that about you. I feel that from you every time I hear you and see you. He's a five-time serial entrepreneur. He sold three companies and authored five books. He's the publisher of Zona Genius. That's zonagenius.com, which helps small businesses, owners, live lives that are fulfilled. He's an in-demand expert on small business. And I've seen you speak uh, and you're amazing. You. I love uh, I love your jackets. I have to say you're a <laughs> dresser. Uh, and he's a sought after motivational speaker and host. He's interviewed all five Shark Tank Sharks and President Obama. Did you know that uh, Mark Cuban is one of uh, our investors and a, and a good friend of mine? Uh, he shared the stage with uh, Simon Sinek, Seth Godin, Gary Vanacek, me and Gary V. I'll tell you a story later, and other notable business leaders. Uh, his latest book, Celebrity CEO, is all about how entrepreneurs can leverage the power of personal branding. And, you know, Ramon, I really believe in that mm. idea that CEOs need to become a face of their company to build their brand and network and then empower their team uh, to do that as well. And I think, uh, I can't wait to read your new book. I'm going to go out and buy that today. Yeah, so John, thanks again for having me here. I appreciate being here very much. But yes, as you said, John, I'm Ramon Ray. And uh, for a number of years, I've worked with large technology brands to help them reach small businesses. As you uh, so astutely said, I'm a motivational speaker as well. Speak around the world, usually focused in business audiences, helping small businesses grow uh, through my uh, kind of funny, energetic, high energy uh, motivational talks. And uh, as a publisher of zoneofgenius.com and BWC Daily, relatively new, our whole purpose, John, is to provide great content to creators, authors, consultants, speakers uh, to help them grow their businesses. So that's the summary. I think that was your question of who Ramon Ray is, is John and I get to a start here and talking about how to live life fulfilled. So, John, thanks for having me. I really appreciate that. It's good to be here, brother. You bet. You bet. And one of the things that uh, that really started this planning of us having this conversation was really about life's purpose. Yes. Um, And, uh, and that that really sort of connects with my purpose in life is why are we here and why do we do what we do? Um, And so I'd love to sort of hand the ball over to you. Let's start talking about some of those things and let's lead with why are we in business? Absolutely, John. I love it. So yeah, I'll riff for a few minutes here, then you let me know uh, how I did. I'd love to hear your comments. Yeah. Here's a few things. And again, everybody, we're so glad you're here at this uh, live and of course recorded a podcast with John and uh, CEO of Nimble. It's great to be here and being in the community here. But here's the few things I've been thinking about, John. One, business is a vehicle, I think, to serve others and impact others. Now, having said that, There's a certain point in business, John, and I'm guessing you may have been there as well, of where you're in survival mode. Whether you're working for a company just to get a check or you're building your business because you got fired or you need to make money. As you may remember my story, John, I worked at the United Nations for a number of years until I was fired. So when I was fired from the UN, it was survival. I wasn't trying to impact the world, change lives, do anything special. I needed to provide for my young child at the time and my wife. We were a single income household. So you're in survival mode at some point. But I think as you grow, John, and I'm blessed to say I've had some measure of success. I've not arrived yet. You've definitely had your measure of success and done some pretty cool and big things in the world. Hopefully at whatever success means to you, John, you can then use your business as a vehicle to help others. Yes, wealth, profit, whatever you want to put it. But then you can start giving to others, whether it's money or giving your time to others. So when I think of why we're in business, I think, John, as I can pull a number of books from my bookshelf, Gina Whitman's book, Traction, you know, our mutual friend, Seth Godin's book, This is Marketing. I could go on and on and on. These books talk about the tactics of business success. And I know in your heart, John, it's about relationships, but the tactics of business success, and I can hold up book after book, Mike McCallum's book, Profit First and More, is so we can grow and build sustainable businesses so our businesses can serve us, John, serve us, not the other way around. So then we can go and I say our families, John's kids, my kids, as we do that selfish thing just for our family, then as we extend family wealth or other family members, and then John, 
for the greater world. So I, I'll pause there, John, but that's how I see why we're in business. After you leave survival mode, build the systems and processes, now your business is a vehicle to do yeah. what you want with life. And, and I love that you really talk about that foundational thing first, where you really got to take care of your, yourself and your own and then take care of others. Because if you don't have a strong pyramid, a foundation, you can't do that. And if you, do you know, Mitch Jackson, the, the lawyer, uh, if you don't I have to introduce you, okay. we were having breakfast one day and he told me about the, uh, the five key tips of Mike, the milkman. It's his father-in-law. And uh, it starts really with your health and, uh, and then your, uh, your work uh, and your family, your family and your work. And I don't have it all, but I'm going to have to put it and publish it into here. But but the, but the reality is that for me, the reason I got into business was I had a need. I struggled yes. to manage relationships effectively at scale as part of a small business or actually as part of a sales team for an enterprise software company. And I think that uh, a lot of the best products come from your own need because you're passionate about it. You understand the problem. And my problem was I was trying to manage relationships with a day timer and spreadsheets and mm -hmm. a piece of paper. And uh, and it turned out that my problem was shared by millions of other people. And in the end, what I found was that by building a platform that helped myself, I was helping others. And I sort of started to repeat that by building these systems that helped others at scale to achieve their dreams. And I, I love that about the the purpose for me being in business is really to grow by helping other people grow. And I think that if you are in business to make as much money as you can, I don't think that's what life's about. Life isn't about making money. It's about making memories out of moments. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that if you can truly serve others at scale, you'll have more than enough blessings in your life uh, to last you uh, a lifetime. What do you think? No, I think so for sure, John. I want to encourage those who are watching us live, feel free to comment as well, John. And I want to see who's here. So feel free to comment. Whatever platform you're watching on, we want to see that and showcase, if we do, your uh, comment as well on the screen. But I think you're right, John. I think what's it's interesting that happens is when you build a business just to make money, mm -hmm. I get it. But sometimes you can be tended to cut corners. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can be tempted to do things wrong. But I find when you reverse it, yes, we need to make money. Obviously, we want to make a profit. Obviously, this is a yeah. given. But when you build the business out of relationships, huh? Let, let me sit back and think, what does John want? What does he need? What makes him a success? If I do it based on that and reverse it, John's going to naturally want to invest in me with his time or mental energy, whatever. And I think that's how you build relationships in business. That's how you build it. I told you, John, that I went to visit a friend of mine who's in car sales. Yeah. And car sales traditionally have been kind of slimy. And, you know, you Google, you know, car salesmen, they have these guys who look kind of shady. But I've learned over the last few years, John, that the car dealers I'm working with and the car dealers I see, man, they start with the customer first. How can we help you? How can we serve you? What's your goal? Hey, you know what? This is not the best car for you. Go to my buddy across the street. That's how their sales are growing. Yeah. So it's a side note. But talking about that relationship, John, it's so important. Did you know my father was in the automobile business? You may have told me, but I forgot. And I said it genuinely. So yeah, look at that. Yeah. Did he go through that era of people thinking, oh, he's, you know, tell me about that. How did that kind of echo for you? What I just said? He really was a, he was a relationship uh, right. sales guy. In fact, one of the things I, I, I loved about, one of your tips was ask for a smile before asking for a sale. Yes. And I think that's the way he worked. But tell me what you mean by that. Yeah. John, what I mean by that is it's kind of as we're hinting here is, is that let's take car sales, for example. Mm -hmm. Somebody's coming in flustered and frustrated or not, or they have their kid pulling on the arm, whatever. You're so focused on the sale, so focused on the commission that you're not looking at this single dad, this single mom, or this family of eights coming in all busy. Did you offer them a donut? Mm -hmm. Did you offer them a cup of coffee? Did you just say good morning? So I know you and I are nice people. We may do that, John. But I think it's my journey, my discipline of I do this even with paying clients. I say, listen, I don't need anything from you. I'm literally texting you right now just to say, how are you? Yeah. Yes, John, we're in business. Yes, we have a relationship. Sure, I hope they hire me. Yes, but it is that relationship, John, as you do so well. And in fact, I know this is not about Nimble, but I must say what Nimble does so well, as you've taught me and showed me things, right? It's using the technology even to know, oh, John just tweeted, 
He got a new dog. John just shared on this platform. He did this. Now it's a relationship. I can be warmer and not just, hey, can you buy my water bottle? You know what yeah. I mean? It's That's no fun. That, that's not warm. But I yeah. think those who are warm and those who ask for a smile, just saying, John, good morning. John, how are you, John? I'm so sorry this happened in your family. I was on a team call today and somebody had said one of their, their friends passed away just yesterday, John. We paused the whole team meeting and just talked about that friend for a minute or two. So yeah. it may sound silly, but that's part of the human relationship, John. Yeah, people buy from people they like. And yes. uh, and you need to build intimacy and trust at a certain level in order to get people to open up to you about their needs. And that's why we service is the new sales. And the more you know about somebody, the better you can serve them. And if you know that that person in front of you is struggling as a family member and they're trying to achieve certain things, maybe they're carpooling for their soccer team or whatever, you kind of get to know what their needs are and you start to serve them and you know what? You're gonna get the you're gonna get the sale. Yes. And, so, and John, can I add one more thing? Yeah. And even if they don't buy from you, John, per se, going back to relationships, no, tell their friends about you. Yes, man. At the maximum level, yeah. Maybe they're not gonna because, buy. Maybe they will. Because if you go and tell them, you know what? Maybe that Subaru is a better car for you than my Ford is today. Yes. Because you're an outdoors person, and they've got a really great all-wheel drive car that's really gonna fit you well. God, they're gonna remember you. Yes. They're gonna you have the win. Yeah, yeah, you have the win. So, so you're right. So, I think that relationship. And I also want to shout out uh, Chet Holmes. You may, I'm sure you maybe you know Chet Holmes, Amanda yeah. Holmes. Yeah, they have this thing called Dream 100, and I think that's so important as well. That aspect of Dream 100. People think of it just in sales, but it's also in the relationships that you have. That tight list of people who you can, you know, nurture. But please go ahead, John. So, one of the other things that you mentioned was this is the season of more business and less family. What do you mm. mean by that? Yeah. So. Sometimes, John, as we're building businesses, because we're talking about what does it mean to build a business, you know, to live life fulfilled. I got this from, um, I forgot her name, but the, the name of the company is a Carol's Daughter, uh, kind of a, a focus on, it's not just black women, black Spanish women with curly hair, a, uh, a hair care products. And um, I, I wish I, her name would come to me in a minute. But the point is, she said, some days I was a great mom and a bad business owner. Mm. Some days I was a great business owner, but not so good mom. And so I want to take the pressure off of businesses, John. I've gone through that. Some days I had to tell my family, listen, this is an intense time period right now. So for these three days, for this weekend, for this six months, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be less present. This is the moment I need or whatever. I remember, John, when I was getting my bachelor's online, going to school at night, what, et cetera, when I had a family to raise, working full time at the UN and doing my business journey. Bless my wife. She's like, Ramon needs 16 months to get through this. So my point being, John, is that as you're building your business, understand it's not always going to be cake and fiddles or whatever, you know, like Pollyanna. It's not going to be great. Sometimes you're going to be like family, family, dad or mom is going to have to step away every Thursday and Friday. I'm not going to be here for family night. Give me some grace because I'm building the business. So I want to acknowledge that as you're building your business, sometimes your family will have to give you slack. And then sometimes I may have to tell John, hey, John, sorry, I can't come in and help nimble with this, John. Can't do it. Me and my wife are going on date night. And John, knowing the person he is, he's going to be like, yay. <laughs> but my point is sometimes you have to either one. So the converse of that is business. You're going to have to wait. Client, nope, can't do it. Sorry, I know you're going to pay me $30,000, $100,000. Can't do it. My kids have in soccer practice. I got to run and serve them. So that's kind of what I mean. The seasons of business, John, on that journey, it's not always going to be in perfect equilibrium. No. And I can tell you, uh, having built two global software companies, it's a sacrifice. Yes. Ongoing. And uh, and people don't really know what it means to be in the driver's seat of a, as an entrepreneur unless they've been in that driver's seat before. And I could tell you, Goldmine was a 10 year overnight sensation. <laughs> and it has been too. You know, people overestimate what they could do in two years. They underestimate what they could do in 10, as Bill Gates says. And, uh, and it's so absolutely true. And I could tell you there's been so many times where I've cried myself to sleep just yes. to, from the worries and the struggles and the shit yes. that you just go through. Do you know, you ever watch that movie Shawshank Redemption? Yes, yes, yes. You know that scene where he's crawling through the ship pipe to the river out of the out of the jail? <coughs> yes. Sometimes it's like that. Yes, yes correct. And, and 
And John, if I'm sure you've gone through this, I know I have, is that sometimes our family, God bless them, they do their best, unless they're entrepreneurs, they don't always understand it. They want to and they no. appreciate it, but you no. know, taking bets and risk, like what? You're gonna ex expense all this on a credit card and, and or blow your line of credit or whatever. I'm being full disclosure, yes. I've done things like this. Sometimes your well-meaning spouse, forget your kids now, your well-meaning spouse, like what? You're like, yeah, I gotta take a bet. Yeah. And hopefully the bet will pay off. But I know I've built, you know, the small companies I've built, but I, I that's what I had to do sometimes. Yeah. And, but you know, hopefully your successes are more than your failures. <laughs> but they, they appreciate it. I want to just interject. If you have any questions out there, please ask them now. Yes. We're compiling them. Uh, we'll answer them during and after. Uh, another thing that you mentioned was the challenges of growing a business. And I think this is all sort of related, right? Yes. Um, but do you have any other sort of wisdom on the challenges of growing a business? I, I know that many times entrepreneurs give up right before they're about ready to hit that stride. And, um, and, and what are your thoughts about yeah. the challenges of growing a business? Sure. I think two different things. And I think for those in the audience who are the startups going to be billion dollar companies, as it were, you do a billion dollar bigger. That's one lens, which John, of course, can talk to very eloquently. He's built bigger, bigger, bigger companies. So that's one level of stress. But I think the principles are the same. But talking to those who are the smaller businesses, half a million, million, two, three million in sales, things like that, the smaller companies that are my people, I think some of the challenges, John, are as follows. One, you being a leader, do you have the right team in place that can help scale the business? I think that's a problem, especially for the smaller businesses that I work with. Do you have the right team in place? That's one. I think number two, knowing what you're not good at and knowing, John, what you're very good at. So one of my weaknesses, John, is money, meaning I can add, but I'm just not that cash flow, finance, balance sheet. It's not my gift. As you may get a sense, I'm more of a visionary, a marketer. That's my gift. Content guy. I can do it in my sleep. So understanding what you're strong at, what you're weak at, and then hiring others to help you. So I have a CFO, I have an accountant, book, these things like this that can help me. Hey, Ramon, look at your numbers. It's not so right. So that's number two. And I think number three, John, as you said, I think that, uh, uh, and I can talk about so many of the tactics, marketing and all these things. But the third thing I'll leave with, John, is that the mindset for business growth. So those who have not yet been in business yet are just starting out. Business is hard. You got to have a stomach for it. As John says, 10 years success, overnight success, whether to 20 year, three year, business is tough. And oftentimes as Marie Forleo, another person you may want to have on here if you haven't yet, her book, Everything is Figure Outable. You got to have that kind of thing in you. Okay. Client said no. What am I going to do? Okay. This broke. What am I going to do? Okay. Huh. Two years of sh sh shut in place happened. What am I going to do? That's where you find the survivors or not survivors. What do you think, John? Yeah, I, I, I really believe that a lot of business success is about setting a goal and putting one foot in front of the other. Mm. And, and, and that may sound really, really simple, but a lot of people just don't persevere. They, they kind of give up and it takes time to build uh, a business. And I do think that understanding your strengths and weaknesses and hiring people better and smarter than you in your areas of need are critical. But I think the most critical thing is hiring for culture. Yes. You want to hire good human beings. You want to hire people with good hearts and souls because you can't fix that. You can't change that. And the other second thing I hire for, I hire liberal arts majors. And that's because they know how to read, write, research, and communicate. And I think that's the biggest part of business and life is effectively listening and communicating and following up and following through. And liberal arts majors, they learn how to do that. And they're really grateful when you bring them in and grow them and teach them the business and technology skills that are required in today's business world. And so I hire culture first. I hire uh, liberal arts uh uh, second. And then my last one, I love the Midwest. I, I don't know what it is. I was born in the state of Ohio. <laughs> I, I just love the Midwest. Midwest people are just, they're good. They're, we are. Good. Thank you. We are. And I must say, John, about hiring for culture. And by the way, we are hiring for culture <laughs> fit. But um, one of my team members, her name is Helen, uh, uh, John, talking about hiring for culture and fit. Slightly different than what you're saying, but I think it resonates. Yeah. And I was arguing, not arguing against, but I didn't want to be so SEO driven with some things I'm doing. Now I should be, I'm running a content company and you know the importance of SEO. And so John and her wonderful uh, accent, she's from Nigeria. She said, Ramon, Ramon, 
I disagree. And she made her case. It was like a TED talk why I was wrong. And I, in front of the, all, we had a team meeting in front of the whole company, you know, small team of about five to 10. I said, Helen, what you just did was amazing because nothing disrespectful, but you pushed back. And I say, that's exactly what I need people to do. I don't know everything. So to your point, John, hiring for culture and fit, you need people around you. As I tell my team, if my zipper's not zipped and I'm going on stage and you don't tell me, most likely you probably should be fired. Meaning that's the relationship we should have. You shouldn't be, I shouldn't be that egotistical where you can't call me out and say, hey, Ramon, yeah. something's wrong here, buddy. If that makes sense. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Another thing you mentioned was how to build a business that serves us. What do you mean by that? Yeah, John. I am seeing, even though I'm running a small business and the companies I started, I want to acknowledge have been small businesses. You know, John's run some bigger, much bigger companies, but the principles I think are the same. So I find that many small business owner Johns, and I'll pull out one more resource here. I have a lot of resources I can pull out, but uh, uh, Tim, Jim Collins book, Turning the Flywheel, right? You know, I, that's kind of one thing I recommend everybody take a look at, Jim Collins, Turning the Flywheel. It's that aspect of understanding no matter how small it is, but especially when you have a team or two, you know, an assistant or two. How does the business work? If you're waking up and slaying the, the, the client, you know, the, the trying to get into sales, washing the dishes, drying the dishes, putting them away and everything, John, it's hard to relax. It's hard to take two weeks and go to vacation. It's hard to live that way. But if you have a team, if you have processes, and then you have systems on top of those processes that support that, if you have an operations manual, if you have great people who can follow that, if you have a good base of clients, if you're serve, if you're in touch with your clients on a regular basis, John, I find it's not going to be perfect, but that's building a business that can start to operate as a machine. So yeah. that's what I find is happening. Nimble. I don't know what Nimble's operations are, but I'm guessing, okay, businesses of a certain size that need to have relationships or be in touch with people. They're looking for some sort of solution for it. They find Nimble. They take maybe a demo or free stuff, whatever it is, and they become a client. I I'm making generals, but I'm guessing that's the flywheel. So yeah. if you're, every business can get a flywheel like that, yes, there's details. How do we do the Facebook? How do we do the ads? How do we do the copy? All that stuff, the engineering side in your case, of course. But what's the simple flywheel? And so that's what I mean, John. I encourage all small business owners. And by the way, uh, I have a, a list of best books. I've been pulling up so many books. If people just DM me on Instagram, my Instagram is Ramon Ray Smart Hustle, just the word books. I'll send them a kind of a list of my best books. DM me on Instagram, the word books. Point being, though, is that that's what I mean by building a business that serves you. That's what I mean. That Jim Collins, Flywheel, and more. Yeah. And, and when you say processes... I so identify with that because there are repeatable people and company processes that we all do, whether it's hiring people, onboarding them, um, selling, uh, um, uh, onboarding the customers, whatever, uh, outreaching to influencers, outreaching to press. There's a lot of processes that are repeatable that should be documented in your company and there should be a way to track them. And did you know that there's 225 million global businesses, less than 1% of them use any CRM and most people's CRM is a spreadsheet and that the people that do use CRMs, they use them for sales people to track prospects and that's it. So not relationships, exactly not relationships. They basically bag and tag leads. So most companies, salespeople are 5% of the company. So what are the rest of the people in the company doing for managing people and company processes and people and relationships? They use spreadsheets and contacts in Microsoft and Google, which is, it's really hard. But getting back to the businesses that serve you, one of the things that did come up to me that's slightly different than what you shared yeah, yeah. is I think that a lot of people are slaves to their business, that they, they're they on a hamster wheel, especially you showed me the, the flywheel there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About that. They, they, get, they get up in the morning and they get on their hamster wheel and they just, they're just going. You know, they don't know where they're going, but they're just going and they just keep, you know, and they keep doing the same thing every day and they expect something different to happen. And I think a business that's serving you is a business that's become somewhat consistent. Like, you know, we get uh, about 100,000 uniques per month to our website. We earn those eyeballs through earned media, no advertising dollars. We convert at 5% uh, to trial and 10% to paid, which means 5% of the people hit the website, they convert to trials, 
10% of those convert to paid and our lifetime value are basically the customers stay about three years. And so these are like metrics that are just yes. consistent, right? And that, that consistency serves us, right? Yes. The business is serving us rather than us being a slave to the business. That's right. You John, think? you are so 100%. I think that that's exactly, we're saying the same thing. And I think that, I get it. I get it. Business is hard. And most people, John, probably don't know the things we know. And I must say, only as I've gotten older, am I just beginning to open my eyes to better ways to do business. And I've done, been in business for a while, 20 plus years, you know, at a smaller yeah. level. So my point, John, is yes, we're trying to say today this aspect of live life fulfilled, live life fulfilled, being in your zone of genius and et cetera, is that you don't have to be a slave to your business. And I think that's the key thing is that business was not designed so we're a slave to it. So we're suffering under it. So it's our master business is designed. So we own it. And at some point, John, I must say, so we can kick back. And if it doesn't mean everybody has to do this, but every few weeks or every so often, you can take a Friday and a Saturday and a Sunday off. Two or three times a year, can you take your spouse or your kids on a nice vacation? So I'm not calling out numbers because John may need 10 million. I may need 50 million a year. That's slightly irrelevant. But I am talking about time, John, and I think, but you tell me what you think. I think we can all agree on, on some measure is that it means there's a relaxation at some point. Maybe not in year one, but yeah. by next year in business, one measure of that is, are you able to take off three or four days and relax and, several and times a year? And that's the sign of you building a good team. Yes. Right? Because if you can't walk away from the business and the business continues to run on its own yes. and actually thrive, right. then you're not doing what you need to do as a entrepreneur. Right. Because the business should be able to operate without you so that you can step back, recharge the batteries, and build that plan for the next three, five, ten years. Um what does success mean to you, Ramon? Oh, I love that question, John. And I want to also touch on another thing. Remind me of that question, but I just want to also dive into what you just said is that people may ask, well, what do I do? Nobody, I, I, can, I can hear the nimble audience asking, Ramon, what does that mean? So John, correct me if I'm wrong, because I always want to give you time to you know, push back here. But I know for me, John, once you build the right team, what does the leader do? Whether they're leading a multi-billion dollar, you know, multi-million dollar company as John has, or a company that's a smaller business. I think the similar thing, I look at what's next. I look at the future. I look at where we want to go. That's where I can spend my time at because I have a good team of people that can run day to day, that can do the things that their gift. I can think of where we want to go. So I just want to add that in, John. That's that's the thing I think, no matter your size, you're a small business owner making 400000 a year. Think, how can your business give its next TED Talk or whatever? That's, yeah. that's, that's you know, so, uh, well, but John's- that's what, that's, what, that's what Magellan did, right? That's, that's what all those guys did is that- they, they looked to the future, they, they looked at the maps, and they built that plan, and, but they had teams that could execute and, and get the stuff done. Correct. So yeah. what does success mean to you, Ramon? Yeah, it means, and, and again, let me know if I'm answering in the right vein, because I can be many answers, but I'll, two things it means for me, John. I was writing it. I have a book that I just was reading on the plane today. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yes, this book, another book I'll hold up, uh, Seven Minute Setup by Frank Lopes. I was reading that on the plane today. Uh, and I wrote down, I'm not going to show it, but I wrote down in my scratch writing there <laughs> about success because he says do it in the books. I wrote it. What I want, John, is two things. And they're kind of related because it, it boils down to money to a degree. But I want a bigger house. We live in a very nice townhouse now in, in somewhere near New York City, you know, so no complaint. But I want a bigger one because it's, you know, townhouse a little small because I want to have it so I can host my family. And I feel myself tearing up, but I want two or three families to be able to come and stay for a few days, not too long, John, but stay for a few days. <laughs> don't, don't, make, don't make the beds too comfortable. Yes. So that's one. Slightly bigger for that reason. Just, you know, as I get a bit older, so we can say, sure, you two families or three families, come on over, plenty of room. And me and Ronnie, my wife's name, can have our own space in our master bedroom. So that's one. And then two, John, I think, yeah, I think that's oh, one. Then two, John, I think as God has, continues to bless me. A, a bit more wealth, I'll call it that. You know, I have a way to go to be where I want, but a bit more wealth, John, because as you know, we've talked so I can give to others, John. I go to church in Newark, New Jersey, grew mm -hmm. up in Brooklyn, and, and the, the poor you always have with you, poor contextually, but there's a number of people who will never be like you and me, John. They just don't have the mindset, whatever reason. But I'd love to say, listen, dude, you, you 20 kids, you've never been in a plane before? Yes. Let's fly to a farm in Arizona spend three days there doing getting some grass under your feet so if that makes sense i'd love to just be able to do things like that 
more than the small level I do it. That's that's what success means to me. And going backwards, that means whether it's zoneofgenius.com, bwcdaily.com, or whatever venture I work on or me and John do together, that those things, if I build them to be successful, that will happen. So that's, what do you think, John? That's that's my answer. I'd love to know your answer, by the way, what you think of my answer. I I think those are practical answers. Okay. That uh, that makes sense for your point in your journey. Okay. Um, and uh, for me, I I don't think they're going to ride on my headstone. Invented CRM, made millions of dollars. I may scroll through the John. I may get a I may get a marker like this and late I, at night. I may come by me and Jenna. I may write it in small print. I, I, I just hope, I I hope they don't. <laughs> but 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 I hope what they write is a uh, beloved father, mm. husband, yes, brother, um, friend. Yes, yes. Because like I shared before, we're not on this planet to make money. We're not going to take the money with us. We're on this planet to make moments, um, memories out of moments and to ideally leave others with some gift yes. in the moments that we're present with them. Even if it's simply your smile, I can't tell you how many times I've been at the market and I see people that are like this yes. at the yes. checkout counter and the person checking out their groceries is essentially saying, could you hit the button? Yes. Can you hit the button? And, and, and I just think that um, for me, I think that the most important thing is that I've left the world a better place in yes. with my presence, starting with my family, yes. um, that I've given them the tool, the tools they need to be successful in life, which doesn't mean making a lot of money. For me, success is balancing your outgo to your ingo, so you're at peace and you dig what you do. Yes, it's yes. as simple as that. I love it. Um, and I and I think that less is the new more. And I say all that, and I live in a big old house in a nice fancy neighborhood sure, with sure. a nice car and all that. Well deserved, by the way. Well and, deserved. And and I think you know what I could give all that up tomorrow. And I could live in a small house in North Carolina uh, and uh, and spend my time doing simple things, traveling with my wife and uh, and having my kids visit. And that and that'd be good. But like I said, it all depends on your cycle of yes. time and, and life. And, and to be clear, John, about the house, like you mentioned, the house for me, remember, I'm happy where I am. But just to be echo as well, why I want the bigger house. Yeah, to have your family be, and friends. Yes, I yeah. said yes. So to echo that, yeah. yeah so. And I and I just had my 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 family over for Thanksgiving and had my brother visiting me, my brothers visiting me, and uh, and it and, and it's 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 really what it's all uh, it's what it's all about. Ramon, you've got this new book out, and it's called Celebrity CEO. It's and true. and and I know the power of your brand and your network. Can we see the book? Uh, I don't know if I have it here. somewhere back there. <laughs> yes, I have a copy here. Okay. I've shown everybody else's book. I might as well show mine. <laughs> that celebrity CEO. <laughs> yeah. And and I really believe that your network and your brand are your net worth. Yeah. And that whether you're you're an individual person, you're not an entrepreneur, or you are an entrepreneur, that you should be building your brand and growing your network. Um, and the best way to do it is to get out in the river and give your knowledge away on a daily basis to become your constituency's trusted advisor uh, and friend so that when they need your products and services, they not only pick up the call, the phone and call you, but they drag their friends with them. But give me a little bit more about what the book's about, who it's for and how they could benefit from reading it. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Thanks for asking, John. Yeah. The bottom line about celebrity CEO, John, of course, which comes the one principle is ask for a smile before you ask for sale. This is about building your personal brand. Now there's the corporate brand like Nimble or Starbucks or Mercedes Benz. Take your pick. These corporate brands, except for Nimble, of course, many of us don't know the founder. We don't care about the founder either. They produce a great experience. They've earned the right to have these great brands. Coca-Cola, of course, that's advertising, but you get my point. The personal brand for many of the smaller businesses, especially is about how you, whether it's your face, your smile, your, your visage, who you are 
is identifiable, that you are an asset to the company. When I look at myself, John, yes, I've started a few small businesses. I have Zone of Genius, BWC, Gale, all these companies, but I don't kid myself. It boils down to Ramon Ray and my brand and who I am. So the concept of celebrity CEO is that every small business owner, especially through the power of content marketing, producing videos, producing events, producing your own book, getting out there and maximizing your relationships through all those things, all those things that you can dominate and be more visible in your industry. And that's being the celebrity CEO or the celebrity in your industry. Maybe you're a, a, a intellectual property lawyer in Kansas somewhere. Yeah. You can do all the things I just said, not getting the sale yet, but your funnel being filled, being well known in your local geography or nationally as the best IP lawyer, whatever it is, who you are. Hey, John, yeah, you got you to go John, the IP lawyer. Oh, you're looking for that. Nobody bought yet. But your, your funnel, your your aura, your brand is built. Then, John, as you know, once you build that, the sales will come over here. Yeah. So I'm all about not just getting the sale. I don't want John Farrar to buy from me. No, no, no. I want him to know, like, and trust me, as our friend John Jans talks about. I want him to know, like, and trust me first over here. Then he'll buy. And I want thousands of those people. Because it's easier. That's where it's easier for John just to like me. Yeah. Click, follow yeah. me. Eventually, he'll buy from me. That's what that's about, John. So let me see you. And, you know, this has actually been going on forever before there was a uh, internet, right? Yeah. And before there was social or whatever. Have you ever heard of Earl Shy? Mm -mm. So uh, Earl Shy is, uh, it, 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 he basically used to do these commercials. I'll paint your car for 1995. <laughs> Earl Shy. And, and there is a guy named Cal Worthington, Cal Worthington Ford. And, and he said, I'll stand on my head to sell your car. And so there's, <laughs> There's a lot of uh, Steve Jobs. Yes. Personality, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tremendous personality. And I really do believe that it's the CEO's job to help build the company brand and to humanize it by building their personal brand and uh, and really leading that charge, but then empowering the team members to build their brands because I think a company brand is built on the promises they make and the experience they deliver. And if you can apply those two, you can build a gold mine. I know I did. But <laughs> a lot of that was built on the team members' brands that were being built at the same yeah. time. So this is Nimble isn't the John show. It's the team show where I mm -hmm. helped to build the team's brand. So I initially, when I was just myself hustling, building Nimble, I swam in the social river, identified people that inspired and educated me in and around the promise of the products and my services thought leaders in social sales and marketing. And I built pay it forward relationships with them and then connected with them for conversations. But then I started bringing my team members in and they got to know these people too. Mm -hmm. And so I think you not only have to be a celebrity CEO and build your brand, but I think it's important to empower your team members to build their brand and yes. to connect with the constituency around your company. What do you think? I think it's powerful. And you know, a question I can, I can hear from that or a pushback. Oh, my team member, Peter, what if they leave my company and take all the things with us? Let me answer that question, John, and let me see what you think. It is more worth it and you have more to lose than not encouraging Peter to grow. And while Peter's there being an asset to your company, than not. It's small mindedness. Yes. It's insecurity by saying, what if Peter leaves? Sure. Do you want Peter to leave the company and take all your secrets? Guess what? Peter can do that anyhow. And yeah. that's a whole other issue of legal reasons. So it's better. And, and again, you're the CEO, you're the owner, sure. But if Peter's out there, say, Peter, please go to the chamber and speak on behalf of our company. Yes, take pictures. I don't need to be there or call me if, you know, if, if it warranted. So I love what you're saying. And again, going back to the gentleman whose birthday I celebrated, John, his car dealership is doing what you just said. He has each each salesperson in the car dealership, mm -hmm. he's teaching them, use your cell phone, use social, take pictures of you and the customer, not me, not the president, you, and post it on social. And that's why his business is rocketing. He said, each one of my team members should have their own personal brand in the community. So John, you're exactly right what you said. It's not just about John, maybe starting out, we got to hustle and grit, but as you grow, John wants to do other things. John won't be here forever. He wants his team to also know the Ramones of the world and others of the world and continue the relationship. Yeah. Because yeah. when it, when it, when it's the John show or yes. the Ramon show, yep. it doesn't scale. Yeah. It doesn't scale. And, uh, and it's not just small businesses that are afraid of their team members, brands becoming big and then walking away with parts of their community. 
I remember when the social first started and analysts at places like Forrester weren't allowed to use the internet or, mm -hmm. or social because they're afraid of them building their own personal brands. And I think it's just so short sighted. So when you talk about the celebrity CEO, I love to interject into there that not only should the CEO be building their brand and network, but empowering and encouraging their team to do it as, uh, as well. So you uh, interviewed the president of the United States of America. And, uh, and I also saw that you met Obama. So I'm assuming that it was one and the same. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. So I interviewed. Well, I've done. I've met President Obama uh, once or twice. Uh, can't remember exactly. You know, again, he's a big dog. So I didn't like have tea with him. But yes, I interviewed the president. This is a few years ago when Google was blowing up. I shouldn't use those words together. Blowing up, you know, bigging up uh, Google Hangouts, whatever that was years ago. And they yeah. had a contest. My understanding, John, is that 300,000 people applied to interview the president. And so I'm, yes, I'm a bit prideful to say I'm, I'm going to, you know, whatever they call that, <laughs> you know, is that they picked me and five other citizens to interview the president. And I talked to him, of course, about the only thing I talk about, small business. I said something about small business. And I, and you can look it up on YouTube and he's, hey, Ramon, how are you? Or something like that. So that was fun, John. I think it goes also, it's about relationships. Now, I didn't get that because of a relationship with the president, John. But I think as you do so well, as I do so well, part of that, another book I'll show here is the book called Like Switch. It's by an FBI counterintelligence officer about how to develop relationships with people. They're doing it in a patriotic way. But and you can still do it in a good way is that it's about being friendly, being nice, smiling, being approachable. The producer who was in charge of me, the gatekeeper interviewing the president, I didn't know I was doing all this at then. Because to me, as you know, John, probably it comes from my heart. Yeah. I naturally smile, naturally yeah. say hello, naturally crack jokes, be, have the person being a stranger be my best friend. Who do you think they're going to have as they're narrowing down the list of people to interview the president? They're going to choose. And, and yes, that happened. That was cool. I had an online interview with the president. And I think that goes far as well as I was telling you, interviewing all five sharks on Shark Tank and being on stage with some big people. Many people have done it. So not taken away from them. But my version is, yes, I think by being a nice person and the principles of relationship, whether it's a relationship for two minutes or a multi-year relationship, the principles will get you far in life. Yeah. Amen. And uh, when you interviewed him, I guess it wasn't in person, right? It was over Google Hangouts, right? Correct. Yep. Did you feel his energy across the, the channel? At I all? did. I did. He was at another big, big, big conference and I felt his energy more there because it was in person on stage. Yeah. Uh, but yes, he's a very charismatic. And again, I think many presidents have this to a degree, yeah. as, I've heard, as I understand it. Uh, uh, Clinton had it, I think. I understand Reagan may have had some of it. So I think, you know, they, they have the, many of the successful ones have that approachability. So, yeah. yes, you kind of have that open collar, easy, roll up the sleeves. Mm -hmm. Hey, John, what's up? You want a hamburger, John? I'm yeah. like, this is the president? Dang. <laughs> I, I was at an event uh, a few years back, and uh -huh. I, uh, I had a face-to-face, one-on-one conversation with Bill Clinton. Nice. And – um the thing that struck me about him was I felt like he was looking right at into me and listening to me. He was with me. He was giving me a hundred percent of him in the moment we were there. And I really do believe that if you give your presence to another human being and uh, open, ask an open-ended question and then just listen, you will learn everything you need to build that connection that you need to have and I was just, I was, I was really moved by it, by his ability to just like be there and the presence. And he, he was kind of older by then, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I think those guys definitely have to have that ability. And if I have one tenth of that, I think I'm doing all right. You do. <laughs> and you have a little bit more. Do you have two tenths of that, John? A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your biggest surprise as an entrepreneur uh, that you, that you've had as you're growing your uh, businesses? Um, I'm not sure if this is the biggest surprise, John, but I think sometimes I surprise myself. That's one, uh, just about a variety of things. Like I think I have self-limiting beliefs. That's just, I'll share that with you. Self-limiting beliefs that I'm surprised what other people see in me. Mm -hmm. And I think too, John, realizing as I, as I started a few companies and like, for example, one of the businesses I have BWC daily, large email list of personal development. We have about 10 to 12 writers. We had a team meeting this morning at 4 AM and I have a project manager and more. It's amazing, John, when you inspire people, 
when you like people, when you share with people, when you support with people, everybody needs to be paid and compensated. Yeah. But that's secondary to let's say John worked for me. That, mm -hmm. John will go to miles. If yeah. I just say, John, thank you for doing the shrubs today, man. I noticed that you picked up the trash outside. Thanks. I appreciate you. John will go miles. Miles. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, people don't work for the paycheck. They they really work for the the growth and the and the kadoos and the human interactions that they get with the team members around them. It's really about the culture. Uh, sure, the money's important, but it's it's not as important as the fact: Am I growing? Do I like the people I'm in the trenches with? And do I feel appreciated? You know, because we all we all want that. It's it's a, it's a. I think if you study human nature. And uh, and really tune into that with other human beings that you can't help be, but be successful um, with uh, relationships. Um, Ramon, if people want to learn more about you, how can they do that? Best way is probably to go to RamonRay.com, RamonRay.com. And thank you for the opportunity, John, to be here. You're an amazing interviewer. I'm glad to be here on your beginning journey. Thank and uh, as I said, they can DM me on Instagram, Ramon Ray Smart Hustle on Instagram, the keyword books, and they can see some of my top lists. I've held up a number of books so they can just get my ready list of books uh, that I love reading. But RamonRay.com, ZoneOfGenius.com, and BWCDaily.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Ramon, this has really been great uh, having my first interview with you. Uh, I love the fact that we are aligned on so many aspects of our lives, uh, entrepreneurship, family, friends, relationships, and most importantly, small businesses. Because, you know, I, I started two small businesses and, and was lucky enough to be blessed with really tremendous success in yes. my life. And I think one of the things that has surprised me as an entrepreneur is how powerful my higher power is. Hmm. I, like my, uh, I, I call it the three P's of life, passion, okay. plan, and purpose. Yes. If you figure out what your passion is, build a plan to achieve it, make your purpose on a daily basis. That's sort of a recipe for success. But you really need to take your prayers and put them out to your higher power, to the mm -hmm. universe, and be present enough to listen, to hear when the universe knocks, be brave enough to open the door and walk through it. But when you do that, the universe just delivers. If, yes. if, you, re if you just ask, what do you think about that? I think it's so, so true. Some people call it manifestation, you know, claiming it, whatever it is. But I think it's true, John. I think that, yes, there's a higher power. I happen to be a Christian, believe in God. People may believe in a variety of slices and versions. Mm -hmm. But I believe, yes, if you think we're just here for ourselves, it's just us, I think you're short-sighted. So mm -hmm. I think that, yes, this aspect of there's something bigger than us, something we answer to bigger than us, I think it's important, John. And whether you call it vibration, call it energy, that's a whole other conversation. But yes, I believe that this is where uh, you have a vibe with people. This is where, what is it? Uh, think, think and grow rich. Yeah. Good, for, good or for bad, whatever you want to think about the book meaning. But you, you it, where your mind goes, mindset. Yeah. This doesn't mean I can make this book lift. Not talking about something woo-woo like that, but positive thoughts, thinking, I can be the Olympics. I can be the Olympics. And I'm with the right age. I do the right things, John. You have a bigger chance of being in the Olympics than someone who doesn't. So, John, I 100% agree with you. I think that that soul aspect about you and me, that's also another thing we're in synchronicity with. So, 100%. I really do believe that uh, believing in, trusting in, and asking for help from your higher power is probably – one of the most important things that you yes. can take away from this today. Of course, relationships are critical, building your brand and your network, having a plan for your thing and doing your marketing and your sales properly and having the tools for it, all the rest of it. I think, I think the higher power part and also your purpose, like what is your purpose? Why are you doing what you do? If you're doing it just to put more dollars in the bank, I think that you're really missing out on an opportunity for a higher purpose in life. And as I shared with you earlier, um, I don't know if I've ever told you this, mm -hmm. but when I sold gold mine a year later, I got a head tumor, I almost died. Yes, you did. Uh, yes. So imagine, you know, having this tremendous success and almost just losing it all. 
in the process of healing, I came to the conclusion that I'm on this planet to grow my soul. The best way to do that is by helping other people grow theirs, rinse and repeat. And that's really my purpose on this planet, which is why I build relationship management systems to help other people build the relationships they need to achieve their life's successes. And I, I just think that across all those areas of topics, we're just so reading from the same hymn book, if you know what I mean. We sure are. We sure are. We're, we're the hymn book of success of life, John. How about that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Um, Ramon, thank you so much. Um, I will be talking to you soon. If I don't talk to you before the holidays, have a blessed holiday and a, uh, a prosperous new year, my friend. I appreciate it, John. Be blessed to you as well. Appreciate you and all your team. Thanks, brother. Thank you.